Good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm going to do a full summary of Berserk, the Flame Dragon Knight novel reaction. So I haven't read this yet. I found it on Reddit a few days ago, but I was like, you know what? Let me try to read it and record it and get an actual live experience reaction for this one. So let's dive right into it, right? So Berserk Inru no Kishi. Flame Dragon Knight was written by Fukami Makoto, a novelist and scriptwriter. It's written in a rather simple Japanese with some occasional archisms, more sophisticated words and technical vocabulary fitting the fantasy world. The language is reminiscent of Berserk, though probably simpler. So, prologue. General Kristen of the Grand Dukedom of Grand. Oh, Grant, sorry. Grant, Grand Dukedom of Grant. I'm oh, sorry, my reading sucks, so bear with me. Comes to God Tower, where a heap of corpses lie. Rich, beautiful women are being killed in a gruesome way and then hang around the castle town. Hmm, that's interesting. He wants to investigate. It seems like a high born person is the perpetrator. That's why he feels the need to investigate the murders in secret as much as possible. Oh, okay. Interesting synopsis. <laughs> of a, <laughs> interesting synopsis of this summary. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Chapter one. Grant is a nation inhabited. I'm sorry. Grant is a nation inhabiting a volcanic island in the northeast of the mainland. Everybody there knows legends telling of a vicious dragon and a virgin who sacrifices herself to it for the sake of the country. The powerful Tudor Emperor uh, Empire from the continent has been trying to conquer the island since 14 years ago. Right now, the Fire Dragon's Nest, the country's most important fortress, Grumble at Arkvist, has been serving as a commander for 10 years. Grumble's father has died in a battle long ago, and his mother was killed by the Tudor soldiers 14 years ago. Oh, wow. So, okay. So, interesting enough, we see that Grumble is a knight, or a commander, I should say. And his dad and mom are both dead. Okay. So 14 years ago, Grumble has red hair. He is already huge for his fa his age. His mother hailed from destitute nobles' schools. Him in swordplay. Okay. Despite he... I'm oh, sorry. So despite he gets beaten up by some kids, thinking Grumble's dead, they abandon him in the forest where he lies there. A girl with a wolf accompanying her approaches him and calls him a dragon. So hold on. So he's all right. So his mother healing. So okay, Grumble was fighting these kids, and these kids tried to kill him. What kind of? I mean, I know Bozook is jacked up, but Jesus. But all right, he was already big, so we already know he was a big kid from well the beginning. And who's this mysterious girl who found him with a wolf? This strange elf-like girl name is Benedicti. She seems blind. She says her eyes can't see, but her heart does. Grumble seems to um, seems to her a big red object, so she calls him a dragon. Okay. She drags him to a hot springs where he heals his wounds. Benedicti tells him he will become a powerful dragon able to burn everything down. He will attack with fire and his scales will endure any blow. So that's so cool. So he had a prediction just like everyone else. You see, okay, so before we continue, we always talk about Berserk having people destined with fate and what makes Guts so peculiar and so outright like just badass is that he is able to fight against fate. He was fated to die several times, but he didn't. He was fated to die in the eclipse. Like you, like okay, we all saw the eclipse. If you guys are watching this video, you, you guys experience it by reading it. You know that was an impossible situation, but yet he survived. And anyway, let's continue. Soon after Tudor's attack, his family servant is cruelly killed. While his mom is raped and killed while he's forced to watch? Oh my god. <laughs> Later, together with another other children, he is abducted to the Empire's fortress on the island. Ch Chester as a prisoner of war. Okay, 
So that is horrific. I can't even imagine what he probably went through, Grumble, seeing his mom. Anyway, we're not going to get into that all the way. It's bad. There he undergoes cruel re-education, with, which is supposed to make him a faithful to Todor. There he meets Edward, a minor candidate to succeed the throne of Grant. And Sud- was Sigdor? Sigor? Sigur? A noble girl <laughs> and becomes friends with him. God, my reading sucks. Alright, <laughs> I'm just joking. They hope they will be rescued soon. Oh my god, look at this name. Abbe Cassie. <laughs> an officer. Uh, Abbe Cassie. An officer in charge of the re education is a callous asshole who doesn't value the kids' lives. They all they also undergo military training. Even after a long time, Grumble resists to pledge loyalty to Tudor and gives in to its religion and beliefs of the Holy See. This religion keep messing people up, huh? After some soldiers overheard him, he punishes he is punished by being forced into a deal with a minor officer. Thanks to some clever thinking, physical strength, and noticing that the soldier is using is used to fighting a heavy armor. So okay, you probably beat him by hitting him with a mighty blow, right? He wins and kills the officer in a glory glory way. He kills the same soldier who raped and killed his mother that way. For what he did, Sigur gets punished in his stead. She's raped and tortured. So Wow. Alright, so I didn't understand this one line here. He killed the same soldier who raped and killed his mother in that way. So, oh, okay. So, so I'm hoping he didn't rape the soldier and then kill him the same way he killed his mother. But, like, he probably killed the mo- um, soldier the same way the soldier killed his mom. Like, probably stabbing him on the back of your head or something. And But the fact that he girl got raped after that, this is kind of rapey. So, um, again, if you, if you guys are offended by that, I'm really sorry. But... Spoilers, Berserk is not a happy-go-friendly manga, so I'm really sorry. Alright, so anyway, let's go on. Four years pass. Grumble continued presence starts being looked at as a problem. So his continued presence starts being looked at as a problem. English. Alright. Abacassi arranges for him to fight in an old coliseum against a tiger. Ooh, okay. Edward comes up with a plan and asks for the fight to be held at night. Also, as a weapon, Grumble is given a warhammer, obviously too heavy to lift. That's funny. Because that's what he fights with now. Again, they win the fight thanks to their smarts. They use torches to illuminate the arena. Benedict prophecy, uh, prophecy seems to be real. Grumble manages to lift a hammer the very same way he used in Berserk. <laughs> While his friends distract the tiger with their torches, he drops the hammer on the tiger's um, on the tiger, killing it glorily. Gorily. <laughs> he killed the tiger bad. Okay. Abacassi is about to kill the kids anyway by ordering some archers to fire, but just as at the right moment, Grand Soldiers flood into the Coliseum. They led they are led by General Christine, who has been wanting to charge in for a long time. But Grant royalty was against. Okay. After many requests, he finally got the permission. Abacassi manages to escape, but Grumble finds a behelot in the pool of the tiger's blood. Ooh. So, it goes back to destiny again. You see what I'm saying? No matter what you do in the world of Berserk, certain characters are trapped in the flow and they are forced to undergo their destiny. Like, Griffith finding that behelot in the lake. Or Guts having that behelot on him. Even though he's able to fight against fate, it's it's interesting. Later, Kristen takes Grumble in as his son. During the festivals after victory, the Grand Duke appears but doesn't say much, which infuriates his son, Edward. After all, he is he has been true. Yeah, that sucks. It turns out Benedict was the highest priestess in Grant. At night, Grumble goes to the hot springs where he has a conversation with this? Oh, so all right, that's just chapter one. Holy crap! And so let's see how much more we have to go. Okay, we're, we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. All right, so chapter two. Fourteen years later, Grumble is now a knight. He leads Flame Dragon Knights. 
and is the army's most popular leader. Edward is the second in command. Oh, that sucks. While Siguri leads heavy, heavy infantry. A battle with the two doors occur. Grumble rides into it with a, a chariot pulling by eight horses. All right, so chariots are obsolete in, as a tool of war, but Grumble in full armor is too heavy for any horse. Wow, okay. He wins the battle, destroying the enemy with a, his giant war hammer. After the battle, he goes to a temple where Bernadis is and they talk about his behalot. Okay. Horus, oh sorry, whoa, why was I Horus? I just made that word up. Horicon, the Grand Duke, is mad at Grumble because of his popularity and his own jealousy. It turns out the Grand Duke was the one responsible for the recent murders. Oh, shakes. He abducted a girl and is keeping her closed up in the hidden room behind his and is rapes her as a way to vent. Wow, what kind of flicked up people up in Berserk, boy? In Grant, there is an assassin organization maintained by the Grand Duke that helps him kill. The Duke is informed that the assassins intercepted an enemy spy. He said Todor is readying a huge army to crush Grant. Ooh, okay, it gets more interesting, huh? Alright, so chapter 3. Edward's mother, um, Flukta, is the Duke's lover. Rumor of her wanting to have sex with Grumble makes Edward anxious. Of course. Can you imagine like you Alright, that's a situation that would bug me. You can imagine like you have a best friend growing up. And he's like, oh hey dude, you know you wanna come over and play some video games? <laughs> and he's like, oh yeah, and he's like, man, you have a hot mom. And your mom was like, they're watching it, like, oh yeah, I want to. Yeah, no, uh, Edward has every reason to feel kind of awkward. Meanwhile, Kristen comes to Fire Dragon's Nest to talk to Grumble about the murders. They celebrated their recent victory together. At night, Horcon and Abikasi meet in a secret, in, in secret, in a ship at the sea of the island shore. Todor wants Horcon, to, uh, Horcon, to sell them his country in exchange for wealth and an important post in the empire. He's a piece of shit that he does that. Horcon decides to make use of his son Edward to kill Grumble. Wow, the biggest obstacle in Todor's way. News of the Grand Duke wanting to give up the throne to Grumble reaches the fortress of the Fire Dragon's Nest. Edward becomes jealous of Grumble, of course. He worked hard, and yet it's Grumble who collects all the praise. And think about it, his dad is kind of like, eh, he's just breathing hatred. Um, meanwhile, an assassination attempt on Benedis, um, Benedis, no, Benedicti? Yeah, Benedicti occurs. Sigur, Sigur manages to defend her, killing all the attackers. Fluta seduces Grumble and has sex with him. Ooh. It turns out she was the one who tried to kill Benedicti. Wow. Okay. Edward learns of what his mother did. He goes mad with rage and strangles her to death. Sigur tells Grumble of the assassins. Edward tries to confront Grumble about his mom, but is ignored. Edward's rage is slowly building. Suddenly, assassins surround him. They deliver him to the Grand Duke's room. Of course, it's because they want to kill Grumble. Horcon gra- congratulates him on killing his mother and inferring, interfering with Grumble's ascension to the throne. He says Edward is worthy of being his heir and tells him to limit his biggest obstacle, Grumble. Ooh, that's so messed up. It's kind of like... Grumble and Griffith went through. I mean, Grumble and Guts kind of went through the same thing. You know, best friends growing up. But I guess Guts kind of slept with Casco, which is kind of like Griffith's girl. But the thing is, Griffith never really took interest in. I don't know. This is kind of freaked up. All right, so chapter four. Benedicti uses her mystical power to tell Grumble's, um, to tell Grumble's future or his future. Sigur, um, Sigur suddenly appears bearing news of an, an envoy from Midland in the capital. Grumble sets off. The temple gets raided with Sigur and Benedicti inside. It turns out the attackers are led by Matsu. Matsu. Man, I can't even pronounce that name properly. I'm sorry if I'm butchering this, but hey. The boss of assassins and Edward. Dang, this thing is hard to read. Wait. All right. At the same time, Grumble is attacked as well. 
in the temple, a fight breaks out, but with sorry, but the two girls manage to escape with the help of Ludwig the Wolf. Okay. Grumble leads a bloody battle against Tudor Solius, commanded by Abacassi. Grumble wins. Abacassi is heavily wounded but escapes. Without a commander, chaos among enemy ranks ensues. En route, I'm sorry, en route to the fire dragon's net, Grumble finds Siguri and Benedicti almost dead with arrows in their backs. Oh, shoes. Benedicti tells him of Edward's betrayal. It dawns on him that everyone is is his enemy now, both Tudor and Grant Solius, led by his supposed best friend. Yeah, that's so horrible. He suspects it being the work of Horkon, and what appears before him saying that it's him who's the commander of the Fire Dragon Nest now. Kristen kills himself, well, Kristen kills himself not to become a hostage. Oh. Edward took everything um, precious from Grumble. Edward's the Griffith of the God of his <laughs> yeah to his gods. I was saying Edward's the Griffith, yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. Abacassi and his soldiers appear at Grumble's rear, having him surrounded. Grumble is defending himself for a long time. Then cannons roll in. Grumble's withstands a few hits from the cannons. He probably has a big shield or something. Edward decides that he wants to deal him the final blow. Benedict T said her last words. Find the Hawk of Light. That is your destiny. You hear that again. Destiny comes into play, guys. You see what I'm saying? As Grumble is about to die, his voice, he voices his dying wish. I want to fight more. The Behelet awakens. The Black Cloud suddenly gathering around. The Behelet grants his wish. God Hand appears. Grumble agrees to sacrifice what is most precious to him. As Siguri... Oh, Siguri is about to be raped by Edward. He feels the brand of sacrifice appear on his face. Ooh. Siguri and Benedict too, do too. Oh wow, Grumble is now a dragon. He kills everyone including Edward and Abacassi. Then he bargains into the, oh, he barges into the Grand Duke's room and kills him too. A few years later, Grumble travels through Midland. He aims to find a Hawk of Light that Benedict he mentions. Oh my god. That is crazy. So remember what we were talking about with the God Hand and stuff? All these guys are people who, like, if you really think about their actions and stuff, what would you do if you lost everything? What, what would you do if you were betrayed? This is what we were talking about, guys. Like, we could only imagine what every one of these God Hand, these apostles, went through to, to turn like this because I don't think... You know, humans are inherently bad. And this is good. This whole thing touches on everything I was thinking about with Berserk and like religion, you know, principles and beliefs. Because think about it, right? It seems to me that people who become apostles, like, except for the account, the account story, well, no, I, I won't say the account story is weak too, and I'll tell you why. But it seems to me that people who become apostles and stuff had strong convictions and strong beliefs strong love for the world like they they're probably people who love the most in certain ways but because of one selfish action or, or one misstep they lost everything like in griffith's case he was beloved yeah he had a little maniacal side to him but i don't know i think that's because the author tried to make him seem kind of like you know like scheming and stuff but you know just because we were watching it and he's like oh this is the villain you know i mean but, like, if you think about Griffith's actions, he truly loved the freak out of guts, you know what I mean? And it's always, it seems to be something with someone who's someone's best friend. Like, okay, in uh, the Count's case, the reason why I was kind of like, if you're in Count, the Count was betrayed by his wife, who is, in most cases, supposed to be your best friend. She was having all kinds of orgies and stuff, and it broke his heart. Um, Rosalind, she was betrayed by her parents, you know, the the. The two sets of people who are supposed to love the crap out of you. Well, not two sets. The, the pair of people who are supposed to love you. Mom and dad, you know. So it feels like it takes a lot for these people to, to turn. And like, it's like we're watching Guts. Like, okay, look at this, right? Guts has a behelet. Any other person in that world would have probably activated that behelet already and have a use the God Hand's power. But Guts is in a unique situation because it's the God Hand who caused him all this pain and strife thanks to Griffith's actions. So, he, he is struggling against his own character and he is becoming a demon his own way. It is so interesting. And for Grumble to fall this far, 
like it makes kind of sense and you have to think too maybe he's not exactly a bad person but because he gave up his humanity to become an apostle and he he's noble and stuff he's willing to do whatever it takes to to satisfy his new lord which is the hawk of light so you guys tell me what you think this was a very interesting read and well you can see website up there but i'll make sure i put that in the um video description so you guys can check it out yourself this was a very interesting summary and it gives me more insight as to why grumble is the way he is um so i wonder did the wolf die he never said anything about the wolf but yay so that might be significant too guys so i didn't see anything about the wolf dying so think about that so who knows gut might meet up to this big wolf they talked about or mentioned and it would continue with the ulterior of ragnarok right so berserk will is kind of like similar to norse mythology but anyway you guys tell me what you think comment below as always um tell me if you like these type of videos and stuff i'm trying to do something different because you know i like to entertain do i not entertain guys all right you guys take care peace